Well, my leaf has been allowed to dry and you can see how the colours have been um, a little bit paler as they've dried but um, they've all flowed together very beautifully. So that's my Asa leaf which I've done and I have another two here. I think I'll start with the simpler one. This one is a shiny leaved crane's bill and you can see the overall impression is of a much more rounded shape than that one but it is lobed which makes it more interesting to draw and to paint. So um, I've done a little drawing in exactly the same way just roughly going around it with pencil and then refining the detail. So let's see what colours have we here. Perhaps we'll make this one more um, oranges and golds and reds. Let's see now. I have here some yellow paint and some red paint and some sort of goldy paint. So let's see how we get on there. Let's have the leaf here again just to remind me of the outer edge shapes. And it's exactly the same thing that I paint the whole leaf with water, being sure that I don't leave any little dry patches. Okay, getting it good and wet. Again, the kind of paper you are using will give you a different result, perhaps. Okay, so nothing interesting to see yet. This is just, but it's a necessary step. It's the vital step here in painting with watercolour. So that's wet. Now, where should we start? Let's go yellow. Now, the paint consistency is reasonably thick because it's going into water. If I put it on in too thin a consistency, it will fade so that you will barely see it. We want these to be vibrant and interesting. Right. A few patches of yellow. Let's go to some red. And look how they flow. And if I hold that closer, you'll see that the yellow and the red have made orange all by themselves. And if I tilt it, they'll mingle even more. But I'm going to do that in a later stage. At the moment I'm just sticking to the red and yellow painted separately and we'll see how they come together. Look at that red just wishing all over, all by itself. And you can see there, perhaps, that there's a little white spot and that's because I didn't get water there, it's not wet. I had to close that up. Um, I wonder if I'll even bother with that goldy colour. I don't think so. We'll stick with the red and yellow and see what we get. Up some more yellow down here. Right, let's now give this a little bit of a shake around and let the colours blend. I don't want to do too much because I'd like to have some parts that are um, different so that I'd like that to be a bit redder and that to be a little bit more yellow and let's just bring the stem out. I didn't wet the stem and if I want it to fade out to the edge I just add more water and the paint will travel up the water but it won't reach the end unless I tilt the paper and send it in that direction. Okay, that's quite nice. I'm going to leave that one while I come on to this Aquilegia leaf which is very pretty and again I've drawn that one out just to save a bit of time. So let's wet these leaves Now in that one there were only two colours, red and blue. In this one there was red and yellow. So we don't need a whole lot of colours. 
I think on this one I'm going to go more blues and greens. So these are not natural colours, although in the autumn they could well be. But this is more about just having fun with the way the paint flows. Nearly there. All right. And this time I'll remember to paint in the stems but they're very fine, so it's possible that they will actually dry out before I get to them. Okay. Now, I do have some green paint. I don't really need it, because between blue and yellow, I should get it all that I need. But let's see how we go. Starting off with just some blue. put the right leaf back there so I can just keep an eye on the edge shapes. And some colours you'll find travel further in the water than others do. I'm actually going to use this goldy colour because between the two they should make a very pleasant green. What happens if I just blend them? Yep, very pleasant. I am tempted to use a bit of green just to see. Gosh, this has dried out on me. It's a little bit watery. I think we'll go back to the blue. So depending on what blue you have and what yellow you have, you'll get different shades of green. I actually very seldom use green paint. I prefer to mix it from yellow and blue because there are very few watercolour greens which look natural. They tend to be rather synthetic looking. And then I end up having to calm them down by adding a very small amount of red into the mix to sort of tame it. Right, so I'm really just putting in blue and yellow and allowing them to blend. I'm actually using two shades of yellow though, one is a bit of a goldy colour, just for interest. Oh, this one wants to flow in the water. If the paint that I'm putting on is quite a thick, buttery consistency, it won't flow as well as if it's more of a milky consistency. So that's another interesting thing as you go along, is to experiment and see the different effects depending on how thick your paint is. And as I mentioned earlier, we don't use white in watercolour, generally. If you want to make your colour paler, you just add more water. Okay. Now let's bring a bit of colour up that stem. See there, it's actually travelled some other way all by itself. But it's dried out here, so I just need to run a little bit more water up to it to allow the pigment to travel. There we go. And now let's do a little bit of blending. 
And that's the advantage of using paper that's not part of a block or taped to a board. You can actually pick it up and tilt it and bend it. I think that blue is a bit stark, so perhaps we'll drop another colour over it and let that blend. A little bit there. But I think that's actually looking quite pleasant and that'll be enough. This one is still drying. But look there, we have three completely different leaves with different effects, different shapes. And now I'm going to show you what you can do with your lovely leaves. Now I have a, a cutter which has given me this edge. Obviously you don't need to, but it was just a bit of fun. And um, you stick that onto a card and that would be a very special card to give to somebody. So there's an Acer. And here I have a geranium. So I used green paint, the gold and the red. And here's one similar to the Aquilegia here, using the green. Oh, I didn't use green yet. Green and the, um, the blue and the gold. So this is what you can do with just a leaf and a little bit of paint.